Oh. Welcome, everyone. Um, we're going to kick off here in just a minute or two. Let everybody in. Uh, please let us know in the chat where you are joining us from. We would love to know. We don't have any takers. I guess they're shy. Dallas, welcome from Dallas. Mm. I see some familiar faces, exciting. That is good. Hey everyone, thanks for joining. We're gonna kick off soon. So just stay tuned. Happy then, Friday yeah. Eve. <laughs> yes, Megan, happy Friday Eve. We're all happy it's Friday tomorrow, that's for sure. All right, in one more minute, we can kick it off. Let's do it. So where else are you guys joining from? So I just saw Dallas. Is there any other city that you guys are from? I'm in Miami. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm also from Miami. Sorry, I'm driving, so I can't chat. Welcome. We got a lot of Dallas folks. So nice to see them all. Okay, well, I guess I'll kick it off. Hi, everyone. My name is Victoria. I'm the co founder and COO at Tech Besties. And I'm super excited to have you all here for this amazing AR workshop that Carly is going to be leading with, in partnership with Four Geeks Academy. Um, you're going to hear from them here in a little bit. Um, but we wanted to give them a big thank you for making this possible for us. And before I go any further, I would like to say happy Programmers Day to all my fellow programmers out there. Today's Programmers Day. Congrats. And um, we would like to share a little bit about Tech Besties. So we are all about creating supportive community for women and allies in tech to help them grow, learn, and thrive. And our mission is to foster spaces like this one where we can connect and collaborate and you know have a career growth. AI is a big part of that. So um, we've also got, got our advisory board members on the call in the chat. So feel free to chat with them and engage with them. They're here to help answer all your questions and we will love to engage with you. Um, it is my absolute pleasure to now introduce you to my co-founder and my bestie, um, an incredible leader, Darian. She's going to share a little bit more about us. And um, we've also got exciting things coming like merch and friendship bracelets. So yeah, go ahead, Darian. Thank you, Victoria. Hi, everyone. I'm Darian Maples. I am the co-founder and CEO of Tech Besties. We're so thrilled to have you here today on our first virtual event with Board Geeks Academy. And we're so excited for you all to just take a look and a deep dive into AI. Uh, but to give you some more insight on Tech Besties, you know, some of you may have seen us be a part of another organization called Girls in Tech. Well, we're coming back full throttle and rebranding um, with a new venture with Tech Besties. And we're building a really amazing community that empowers women and allies through all of our programs. And we have AI Bestie, which are Four Geeks Academy. There are AI Besties right now. Career Bestie, Coding Bestie, and more. So while I can't spill all the details because we have so much coming up, um, we're just excited what we have in the pipeline. Our website is fully launching in October, so please stay tuned. And if you wanna be the first to hear about it, please sign up via our Luma link. Some of you have already signed up via Luma. Thank you so much. 
you'll get our newsletter uh, when we drop that. So our advisory board members, we have selected some of the most amazing women in Dallas and in Miami to be a part of this organization. And they're all leading in different areas of technology. And we can't wait to announce them on our official launch in October. Um, there's some incredible women working for some of the most credible technology companies on the planet. But stay tuned because we've only just begun and we can't wait to grow with you all. So we wanna kick it off now with 4Geeks Academy. We have Laura and we have Charlie. We want them to really introduce just 4Geeks Academy as a whole and what they have to offer to the community and our members, but also diving into AI today. So Charlie, Laura, love to kick it off to you all and have our members really hear about 4Geeks Academy. Thank you. Thank you, Darian. And well, hello everyone. And I'm really thrilled about this opportunity that we have with uh, th this organization. It's it's great to have you all here. I will do a short presentation just to talk a little bit about for gigs and what we do here. And then I will leave you with Charlie, who is in charge of today's workshop. As you know, the name of the workshop is AI Revolution in the Workspace. So we are for gigs We are an academy that we are placed in Miami, but we have uh, 10 locations around seven countries. We have campuses in the USA, Venezuela, Spain, Chile, Colombia, Costa, Costa Rica, Mexico, Argentina, Uruguay, where, I'm, where I am from and where I live, and Portugal. So as a general information, we have more than 4,500 graduates up to, to this moment. Um, and well, more than 85% of 4 gigs graduates find a job during the first 90 days after grad graduation. We have received several validation from different uh, companies and different organizations like, like Forbes or Premios Excelencia Educativa from Spain and we are licensed by the US Department of Education. We have a program that, that includes like two sub programs that are GeekPal and GeekForce. Just to talk a little bit about them, GeekPal is a system that helps students through all their career and beyond that. You, once you get into 4Geeks, you have access to this system, this, this service for a lifetime. So you will always have somebody to help you. In classes, you will have the, the, the access to the instructor and the TA. Then mentoring sessions, you can book always mentoring sessions uh, whenever you need them. And well, there's a big support there to, to help you go through this learning path. And then we have Geekforce, that is the other service, like the second bootcamp, that helps you find a job. And this is our... Uh, one of the things we are mo most proud of because we, do we don't just leave you there and try once you finish your course to try to find a job on your own. No, we guide you and we help you to find a job because that's the main purpose. We want to help people to do their, their changes in, in their career and their lives because most of the times people who want to get into tech and come from other fields wants to do some changes in their lives. So we try to do our best and that's our main goal to help you do that tra that transition about the programs we have we have a full stack development program a data science program um cyber security program and we're launching the applied ai program so there's a lot of things to do with us and well These are some of the companies, the companies that hire our students. There's a lot of them, big companies, small companies. Uh, there's a lot out there. And well, we will go with Charlie. I will present him briefly. He has a background in mathematics and a big passion for problem solving. Um, he entered the world of technology just around three years ago, driven by a fascination with artificial intelligence and a love for, for logic. He quickly find, found his place in AI development, securing his first job in the field shortly after the launch of ChatGPT. And today he's fully merged in the world of 
artificial intelligence, continuously learning and contributing to this exciting industry. And in this workshop, he will introduce us to the AI, to how AI is revolutionizing various sectors and making jobs more efficient. So I pass it to you, Charlie, and thank you for your attention. Okay, thanks. Well, hi everyone. Uh, like Laura mentioned before, my name is Charlie. I work in uh, AI development. Basically, I pass all my time talking with AIs in uh, different ways. For example, I use AI to improve my English. I use AI to uh, learn new things every day. I use AI in my work because I am a developer and sometimes the programming skills we need, the most important programming skill, I think, is copy and paste. We um we are always looking at code in some place like Stack Overflow or stuff like that, but we can also use AI for that uh, stuff. And that's why I think AI is so useful is for almost every, everyone. Today, we will explore how can AI be used in your field. Maybe you are not a developer, maybe you don't work in, uh, in the tech industry, but it's not a problem because AI can be used for a wide range of tasks. And today, we will explore uh, well, some of the most important AI capabilities. For example, let me share my screen a little and we will start seeing some things about AI. I made uh, a small red here just to pass you easily. I will, I'll, I'll share this red with you in the chat and we will explore some things, some topics about AI. For example, what is AI? What do you think that AI is? Do you think that AI have emotions? Do you think that AI is just like a robot? What do you think that AI is? If someone can... Uh, answer that question in the comments, that would be amazing. If not, don't problem. Let me see the comments. Drop your answers in chat. Okay. <laughs> if you want. If you don't want, no problem. In this place, I just have an application I was building a, a little time ago just to practice my English. If you speak with it, it can answer you instantly in any language you want. And okay, let's start. Okay, let's explore what is AI, because AI is a term that came to my to, to our minds maybe just in the later in the in the late, latest few years ago. Uh, it is not uh, a term that really was coined in that in in this time, but uh, we, we we can say that everyone knows now about AI. Everyone knows what is ChatGPT. Everyone knows now what is MidJourney, for example. But in the past, AI was used uh, for a wide range of tasks before ChatGPT, before generative AI, because, because we can explore AI in a different way of concepts. For example, the first concept of AI was coined in the in uh, Oh, sorry, I lose here this, this, dot, dot, list, ready. Okay. The first time the artificial intelligence term was coined was in that conference, in a conference where they were exploring how AI or how machines can understand human-like tasks and how they can perform and maybe pass the Turing test. Uh, if anyone knows what is the Turing test, where you can uh, just uh, explore a little about, about it, but the Turing test is a test used to test if someone can understand if, if if they are talking with a machine or not, something like that. Just to, 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 to know if uh, you are uh, talking with a machine or not. And nowadays, the Turing test has completely crashed because AI can act as a human, but AI is not human. AI uh, has no feelings, and we will explore a little more about it in uh, the following sections. But initially, AI was described as the ability of machines to mimic human reasoning. But we can make a small uh, difference now from reasoning and consciousness. AI doesn't have consciousness. AI can mimic human reasoning and maybe uh, think in uh, just using natural language processing, for example, 
but AI cannot really uh, think and cannot really understand things as the humans do. So there are a lot of things that we may concern about AI. For example, will AI replace our jobs? Where will will, will you lose? Uh, will you lose your lo uh, your job uh, due to AI? And the answers is. Mm, Everyone can have a different answer for this question. What do you think? Do you think AI can replace your job? Uh, well, I think it depends of the job you do. I think in the future, uh, well, nowadays we are using AI in a wide range of things. For example, in our smartphones, we use AI to talk with our assistant or with Alexa. But what will be the future of AI? How will we using AI in the future. I think the future of work uh, and of the workplace using AI is just uh, the productivity. I think I am more productivity uh, productive when I'm using AI because AI can help me, for example, to um, develop ideas from scratch. I can have uh, maybe a crazy an idea and I ask to my AI, hey, Chayo, I think I give a, a name to my personal AI chatbot. His name is Chayo. And well, sometimes I use Chayo to, for example, uh, compose a song, a song. And after that, I can pass it to another AI to give the instruments to my song. Or I can use AI, for example, to make a presentation. I actually make a presentation for this workshop. Uh, after that, I prefer just to write a uh, uh, and a small document and pass you through a link. But in the first place, I decided to use uh, an AI to make the presentation. Let me show you the presentation. You can uh, judge if it's a good or not presentation, but I think it has potential because AI can be used for anything you want, maybe just um, using the, the output of the AI to a task in particular. For example, in this place, this is an application that can generate complete presentations from a small text, but it can be used in a wide, wide range of tasks. For example, compose songs, generate videos, some things that you already know and maybe you already done from this moment. But do you know what, which are the types of AI and the potential problems with these types of AI? For example, one type of AI is the narrow AI. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing the chat. Maybe if someone has a question, let me see, for example, artificial intelligence. Okay, artificial intelligence. Perfect. Okay. The narrow AI. The narrow AI, also known as weak AI, is a type of AI that can perform a repetitive task and a specific task. For example, uh, produce uh, an image or produce audio or produce a video. This is narrow AI. Even the powerful LLMs we have now, an LLM if a, is a large language model, is a model that uh, is completely focused in generated natural language uh, text. Basically, it, it writes like a human or similar to a human based in its training data. The training data of an AI is all the amount of data that we can use and customize and curate this, this data to make the AI understand a task. That is how the narrow AI works. You train the AI in inputs and outputs, and uh, you adjust same thing, certain parameters to produce more uh, um, curated and more important uh, outputs from this AI. But there are more types of AI. One type of AI is the general AI, also known as AGI. The AGI, or, or Artificial General Intelligence, is a type of AI that can perform a wide range of tasks by itself similar as a human and can have an intelligence similar as a human do. And also they are another type of AI called the super intelligent AI or the ACASI. This type of AI is an AI that can surpass human intelligence, more than a human in terms of intelligence. We haven't reached this stage of AI yet, but will we reach that stage in some time, maybe in the future?
maybe it could be. It is a field where everyone is concerned about what will happen in the future because AI can adapt to a different way of tasks and we can always improve the architecture of how the AI is working. But there is an aspect of AI that cannot be done, uh, cannot be uh, ignored. And that is that the AI have a certain architecture that is called, um, for example, neural networks, that they, they are not like human neurons, for example how the human brain works. The human brain is com always adapting to new tasks, to new environments, and learning from its environment easily. But when you train an AI, the AI stays like this. You can always retrain the AI, pass more data to it, but you have to do it manually. AI cannot understand by itself. So we are always focusing in producing more powerful models. An AI model is, this, uh, is the brain of the AI, is the machine in charge of learning and producing outputs uh, based on its, tr its training data. That is the AI model. There is a, a wide range of concepts that I will share with you in uh, or later sections about what concepts do you need to know to understand AI. Let me accept someone else. I use Gong as a companion and it can generate follow up emails pretty quick. Exactly. Do you understand? It's something like we can use AI for almost everything and we can use uh, AI to uh, make our lives easier. You can have more time for you and your family or for your hobbies and less time for work, for example. I think in the future we will, we will just uh, supervising AIs. How is the AI, is this AI performing in certain jobs? I think in the future will be more valuable the the human thoughts because everything will be AI, AI generated and sometimes the AI generated content is not as good as a human can because AI have no has no creativity and there are a, a lot of things that AI cannot do. For example creativity, model decision making, uh, ma making, and also can understand emotions of people. You can ask ChatGPT, for example, what is the sentiment of a task, of a text, and it will uh, accurately maybe um, understand the sentiment of the task. But what happens if you speak to an AI and you are trying to solve maybe a personal problem, an emotional problem that you have? AI won't really help you and will suggest you to reach a real professional in that area because an AI, an AI can understand emotions. Maybe in the future, we can develop a system to um, maybe uh, give a part of the AI brain of the model just to emotions. But in nowadays, AI can understand emotions and doesn't have empathy. You can't use AI for things like decision making and um, when that decisions are related to emotions or personal life, because human uh, humans and AIs are not equal, and we as humans are so so powerful, so much powerful than an AI. Our brain uh, works in a way that maybe we don't have all the knowledge that an AI does, but we can adapt and we can think in a, in a way that AI cannot. For example, we have like multiple threads in our brain and we can have an idea that is completely outside from the main idea we are discussing because our brain works like that. Our brain can connect everything and make it work for you. And AI sometimes can just answer you based on its training data and that's all. That's why I think humans are more powerful and more important and more everything than AI. And we can use AI to be more than, uh, for, for, to, to reach the, the next stage of our brain. For example, I always use AI to understand new concepts in a, just a percent of the time. I can uh, use it just uh, for myself, investigating things and stuff like that. I think AI can be a good way to understand things uh, by your own. 
and which industries are currently being affected by AI. For example, for Geeks has an AI chatbot called Rigobot that I was in charge of develop of the development of Rigobot that can on can help people to understand the coding related task and maybe answer questions about a page in the website and the for Geeks uh, website websites, for example. And education is one of the more affected fields by AI. In the future, we will see AIs in almost every kind of aspects of edu education. Uh, the, the teacher, for example, will probably have an AI assistant where that you can ask for uh, up-to-date information or the students with their laptop maybe with an AI model working inside the processor of the laptop, somebody wants to. Yes, it's an enterprise tool, I'm seeing the messages. It's an enterprise tool, but it's also a tool for everyone that wants to, to improve their, their selves. I said, yes. I'm, yeah, I'm reading the messages for if you want to, to say something, you are completely free. If you want to ask something, ask it and I will answer you. Okay, let's continue with the industries, maybe healthcare. Healthcare is already being affected, but not for a generative AI. We can, we, we must make a difference between AI and generative AI. AI is uh, artificial intelligence and means every kind of uh, models we can develop using artificial intelligence. Model, for example, that can just say if I mean, an image is from a cat or not, or a model that can uh, tells you if in the image or in a text is there a word or not. But there are another kinds of AI that can generate new content. The AIs that generate new content are called generative AI. I just wanted to tell you the difference between this. And the healthcare and the healthcare industry, currently the AI is using more with a traditional AI, systems that can, can perform certain tasks accurately based on its training data. They are um, trained to perform a single task, for example, um, um, know if an image it has a tumor or something like that, a cancer uh, in, in the image or, for example, assisting robots that can help doctors in their, in their surgeries. And there are a lot of things that can be done with AI in the healthcare industry. Let's discuss another industry like customer service. I think the customer service is maybe one of the more affected industries because now you uh, get into a website and you will see how an AI is answering you. It, this, will, this, was, this, was, this was happening a lot of time before ChatGPT, for example, before generative AI comes to our everyday, everyday lives. But nowadays, we can improve this customer service. If you have a business and you are not implementing AI yet, I will suggest you to do it because in the future, this will be an amazing tool for all your customers. Imagine that your customers can, re, uh, can get a, an answer to their requirements immediately, uh, 24 hours a day. This is completely useful for uh, any kind of customer service application or enterprise. And I think in the future, it will be like you get into a restaurant and maybe you will have a screen and you can interact with the screen, just an LLM asking you things. What do you want to order? Uh, do you want uh, some specific details in your order? And I think it's so useful in the customer service. Also, well, let's discuss about uh, some aspect that I know is important for everyone in this moment, the job displacement and the job creation, because I think AI will replace a lot of jobs. That is something that we cannot, um, we cannot discuss because we can automate a lot of tasks and we will be maybe dummy if we don't use it to, 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 to for that. But Will this cause maybe a catastrophic uh, problem in the world? I think maybe not because AI has its limits and also because new jobs will come to our lives. Maybe in the future will be more um, important know about AI 
rather than has uh, another kind of tasks. For example, some uh, AI roles that I think that came that came came to our come to our lives in the future are a tra data trainer, data creator, a trainer, ethical AI consultant, a explainability specialist, like explaining people what is AI. A maintenance ma maintenance technician, human AI interaction designer, a policy analyst, a ABS auditor, virtual assistant developer, a, a security analyst, and all these uh, roles was created with AI. Maybe there are more roles that can came come to our life in the future related to AI. Some jobs will be displaced. Some jobs will be created. I think that's how the future will work from now. And I have a question for you. Uh, would you have a boyfriend or girlfriend that runs internally an AI model with a human-like voice, human-like face, and even human-like body? Would you uh, like to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend like that? Yes or not? What do you think? Let me check it in the comments. Nope. <laughs> okay. Why not? Why not? Okay. Most people say no. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I see everything. Everyone is using AI for its own business. Human resources, of course. Yeah. Tips on communicating with an AI to get valuable outputs, like prompting tips for AI. Okay. I will answer this question just because it's important. I think if you want to learn something new, and I think this is one of the most important things you need to understand. Prompting techniques. When we are uh, talking with AI, there are some terms that come to that. For example, I have here some key concepts that concepts that came to our mind. For example, prompt. What is a prompt? A prompt is an instruction we pass to an AI to generate an output. Okay, how well is our prompt? Is how well will be the answer from the AI. So understanding how to build good prompts is a good practice and something you need to do if you want to use AI for your productivity. For example, what is a good prompt and what is a bad prompt? A bad prompt is a prompt that lacks in a specificity. A specificity. For example, a prompt that asks the AI to generate, just generate an essay. Well, let, let's check it out in real time, for example. Let's check it out something like generate an essay. If I say to the AI, just generate an essay, it will give me an answer about something, in this case, eh, about artificial intelligence. So cool. But this uh, essay maybe doesn't have the aspects I want to include in the essay. If we want, for example, to make an essay about uh, childhood and how the childhood is affected by the interaction with the parents, we need to pass context to the AI. This is one, this is one of the most important the words when we are talking about prompting. Prompting is this, just talking to an AI, uh, writing an output, uh, an input to generate an output. Um, let's discuss some of the most important prompting techniques. Okay, first, pass good, uh, high quality context. The context is all the information you pass to the AI to generate content. For example, where in this chatbot, I pass all the conversation, all the memory in each iteration to have an AI, uh, an AI that has information about the previous messages. But what happens if I'm developing an application, for example, for, of customer service, maybe I need to, of a restaurant. I need to pass in the context information about the recipes, about the about the different plates, the, about the chef, about the um, the schedule, everything. Everything I need the, the AI needs to know needs to be in the prompt basically. And so the first thing you need to know about prompting is context. Every everything uh, every time you are talking to an AI, try to pass all the context you have. And another uh, interesting thing you can do with AI is using uh, certain words that works well. For example, 
act as a, maybe like as a doctor and provide me a detailed uh, recipe for my uh, just a recipe. I'm sick. I feel pain. I, I have a headache, headache. And my legs are feeling weird. The act uh, is just a word that you can use to make the AI answer as something. When you want to get an output that is related to a certain field, I would recommend you to use the act statement. Just act as and uh, provide a statement of what you need to AI act, 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 act as, as, sorry, act, act as I. Uh, because AI can sometimes produce bad uh, on accurate outputs if they are not well customized for that prompt in particular. So when you're prompting is a good uh, technique just ask the AI to act as, as something you need to do as an expert, an expert in one special field. That's the, the best way to define it. Another special thing we can use to AI is well formatting. We can format our answers properly. For example, let's make a translator. Translate, translate the following sentence to Spanish. For example, what happens if I do that? I didn't provide the sentence. It says, but if I just enclose this, the AI will understand it. La siguiente oración. That's why they um, would well formatting works. You must format your prompt in a way that AI can understand the user inputs, for example, on, or you can divide your prompt in different sections. A section to, to, to tell the AI how the AI mo must act, a section to, to pass the context, a section to another thing in, uh, needed in your prompt. And there is a high level of different prompting techniques. Also, let me share you uh, a guide I write a uh, few weeks ago about prompting techniques, uh, how it is called. Let me search it like this. I know you will like this, this, this project. Prom Engineering's course for beginners. Okay, let me log in in my account. Okay, just check it out. Just check it out, and you can clone it locally, so it is for so useful. But you need a little uh, experience working with different projects. Uh, also, there are instructions here on how to need the project. But uh, this project has information on how to improve your prompting techniques, different uh, tools you can use, different uh, uh, types of prompts you can build. For example, uh, a good aspect of prompts is that you can uh, tell the AI Okay, well, another question here. Avery is asking, do you have recommendations for an application for how to build your own custom AI bot that you can train? Okay, uh, do you have uh, experience working with projects of Python, for example? If you are uh, making uh, an application to, okay, let me understand. You want to make an application to train another AIs or just to train an AI for a certain application. If you want to make an application to train AIs, you must first focus on the data, the data you need to, to get from the user. And uh, you need to develop a framework to 
customize this data depending of the user needs. For example, if you're training an AI or fine tuning a model, a fine, tu fine tuning means a uh, customizing a previously trained model to a new task or with new data. For example, here in Locally, I have a model called Llama. Llama is a model from Meta AI. Maybe some of you already know Llama. And Llama is a model easy to train because Llama is a, has different weights and have different uh, sizes, but one size of Llama is just 8 billion of parameters. Uh, parameters in AI is like the amount of data they were trained in. Uh, I cannot test that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And well, maybe I need to know more context about your specific application you want to develop, but a high uh, overview about to look into train AI to be, oh, okay. If you want to train to train on a, an AI to be your assistant, maybe you can first search some YouTube videos about how to train, for example, Llama. Because Llama is a model that is not difficult to train if you have a collab. You can train an AI model in a collab notebook. Collab, Google Collab is a is an application from Google that lets you run uh, notebooks, that, a notebook in Python. It's like a, a, a read that has instructions and has code. And you can use this code to train an AI model. I don't have really a, re a resource here to share with you, but you can, uh, after that, uh, reach to me in LinkedIn and I will provide you with useful, with useful useful resources about how to train an AI from scratch. And if you don't have experience using a collab, for example, but if you want to use an AI for your custom assistant, maybe you just need to train an AI just to use the right context, as I was mentioning before, because you can use your AI, for example, in past context about you. For example, let me ask my own AI, uh, what is my name? What is my name? He knows my name and my github i don't know if i pass my github in the in the in the section but here it is it gives me my github it knows my name it knows my projects and this is not trained to to act like this it is just using prompting techniques the right context and my ai can answer as i want to as i wanted to to my ai to to answer also if you want maybe to act as your assistant and have more complex capabilities rather than, rather than just answering. For example, maybe creating content, maybe answering your emails. I would suggest you first to learn Python. If you learn Python, you can make everything because with Python, you can, well, I don't know if you already know Python. Perfect. Uh, here, say the, uh, was uh, sharing a YouTube video and information about how to train in, in this case in Vertex. Vertex is a good tool also. You can use also, if you want to fine tune a model, you can use also the OpenAI API or the OpenAI ChatGPT. If you go to ChatGPT right now, you will see that you have an option that can let you customize the outputs, customize ChatGPT. If you go here, you will receive instructions. Well, in this case, you just, can, you just can customize how it will respond. But I know they can also let you, uh, you need to upgrade your plan, I think, but you can also make a little of fine tuning with ChatGPT, but you have to have another plan, sadly. But well, uh, if you want to train your AI, you first need to, to think if you really need to train an AI because it is not um, an easy process always because you need a, a large amount of data to really customize the outputs of the AI. If you want your AI assistant, I would suggest you first try just passing the right context and to see how it works. If it works, if it doesn't work, maybe you can just uh, train your own GPT or uh, investigate another resources to train it with your data. But it would suggest you fear uh, uh, first just to use the AI as it is with a lot of system prompt context. The system prompt is, the, is a, just a message we use 
to customize the AI uh, behavior. With the system prompt, we can say, tell the AI, for example, hey, you are not just an AI, your name is uh, Fulano and you will answer like this. And this is a lot of information about something. And you can use a good system prompt to develop a personal AI assistant. That is not always uh, necessary to train an AI model if you don't need it. Exactly, working is smarter, not harder, perfect. And also, you don't need to, to collect a large amount of data to start working. If you want a personal AI assistant, you can use, for example, ChatGPT and, um, and customize its outputs. And also, you can uh, use plugins to make your work uh, easier. So it depends on the case. But if you don't have a large amount of data, I would not recommend you to train an AI model, but yeah, Maybe you can develop a good system prompt, pass it to an AI model, and after that, try to to try try the model, try the model, its answers, and see how it works. If it if it still doesn't meet your requirements, in that case, you will start to st collecting the data, curating the data. That is the process of generating the data set, basically inputs and outputs you want the AI to understand a large amount of data. And after that, you can fine tune a model. It, it is not completely possible to train an LLM just with your data. An LLM, for example, a large language model, we are training in billions and billions of documents and a large amount of data to have a good quality, to produce good outputs. So if you want to train an AI model, there are two basic steps that I already mentioned. The context, the prompt, uh, try to, to make AI, the, the AI work as it is with your prompt, with your information. And the other uh, uh, way uh, the, you can follow is just to train your AI using a previously trained model, uh, fine tune a model. If you fine tune a model, you can also do it without needing a bunch of data, just uh, with a thousand of inputs and outputs examples, for example. What is the current career path training tech where you believe AI will blossom in the near future? Path, uh, career path training tech, just in tech. Hmm. Well, there are a lot of people telling that developers will be replaced by AI, but this is some aspect I think not uh, will not re be replaced, but it will be changed how our develop. It, it is already changing how 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 we work. For example, I always use a GitHub Copilot or Cursor, that is a custom editor that lets you run different AI models. But another aspects of tech, for example, I think product researching. I think you can use AI to research different products and maybe. A scaffold, uh, different, uh, generating some images, generating some product descriptions, pass this to a website or to uh, making some ads to see if it works or not. And after that, start developing the product itself without needing pro, uh, prior uh, development of the product. So product development, I think it would, this will be an aspect that will the AI change in the near future. Also, in the, in the tech path, specifically more things that AI can change. Uh, project management, mm, I don't think the AI can uh, change project management really because management is an aspect that AI needs a lot of context and information about the products and it needs to be there with the developers or with the people. Mm, communications, this is a, a of course, something the AI will blossom in the future. Uh, communications, how the, the people can be connected to, to others. For example, Meta is already uh, adding Meta AI on its systems in Facebook, in WhatsApp, and is already changing. But in the future, we will see it more. We will see AI-generated content in everything and music, uh, generating music in everything also. More things that AI can change in the near future. I think AI already changed almost everything, but still um, there are a lot of things that can be changed. Mm. 
Um, other thing that AI can change in the future can be, for example, exactly in the tech industry. I'm just thinking in the tech industry. Can be, for example, okay, the customer service in tech uh, is not completely related because the AI can answer questions about products and stuff like that. Improving pre-existing products can be something in, in tech. Ah, oh, uh, Internet of Things. This is something AI will come in the near future. We are not, uh, we are using Alexa, for example. We are using another assistance, but in the future, I think our uh, our fridge will have AI. Something that you can uh, ask the fridge, hey, I have meat in, in, in you and the fridge can answer to you would be something so crazy, but I think it's possible. Everything is possible if you have the right tools and the knowledge. So I think Internet of, Internet of Things is something the AI can change in the near future. And everything, everything else relating to tech, maybe. Just uh, things that, that are not related to creativity, and that's all. And any software already exists for project management and through the Project Management Institute. However, I believe there is still more to learn how best to use AI real estate and stroke conserve project management. Yeah, I think uh, you can make a tool for project management, but I think he, uh, in this case, for example, it is uh, just in a, it appears not to be in just in a single field. If, he, if it's in a single field and it has all the context, maybe the AI can generate good content, but I think a project has a, a wide range of aspect to, to, to understand. And sometimes AI can be more too re repetitive for these tasks. Maybe the AI cannot assign the task that a human project manager can. I think well, it's just an opinion. I think this is uh, just an opinion and I think everyone can have its own opinion about AI. For example, uh, one day I was making a video on YouTube on which uh, works won't be replaced uh, uh, by AI. And people, uh, they, there are different kind of people in the comments, people that were su uh, supporting the AI, that, the idea of, of that AI cannot make everything and people's thinking that AI will replace everything. And in the future, every, everything, everybody will be replaced with an AI. I don't share that thought. I think AI will be a companion, will be just a tool that everyone will start using in a moment. But I don't think it will replace uh, all the jobs. I think of course, some jumps will re replace it, but another jobs will will come. Okay, uh, what would you be the what would you be the learning step for creating my own from scratch? For example, their Python and their machine learning. Okay, if you want to make uh, an AI application, uh, I was uh, I was writing um, uh, an article about this. The first thing you need to know is Python. After you learn Python you can start exploring some APIs. You need to understand what is an HTTP request, how the internet works, Connect, sorry, connecting one part of internet with another part of internet. Nowadays, we can use AI on different things, for example, in different aspects, in ways. For example, we can use local AIs or cloud AIs. Cloud AIs are the AIs that uh, companies like OpenAI or Anthropic or Google has, and we can use that AIs uh, through its API. So understanding HTTP request and how to make it with Python will help you to build your first AI application. For example, a simple, super, super simple AI application would be a translator. I already have a YouTube video, maybe I can share to you after that, on how to make your, AI, your own uh, your first AI application using Langchain, for, exa for example. Uh, understanding a framework to make AI applications would make your life easier because, because everything is already done and you just need to, to apply certain modules of that library and that's all. That's why you can start building your first AI application. Learn Python, learn the basic concepts of, of AI, what is a prompt, what is a model, uh, basic steps of machine learning because to make an AI application, you don't need 
to be a machine learning specialist or a data scientist. You just need to learn Python because Python and software development in general can help you to understand how the things are working. Uh, nowadays, we are just using pre-trained pre AI models, for example, to generate images, to generate videos, to generate audios. And we just need to understand its API, which are the methods that this model has, how to interact with it using an interface, and everything can be done with Python. You don't need to train an AI to make an AI application. That's why I think the only thing that you really need to understand to make any kind of AI applications is Python. Now, if you want to make your AI application and a startup, for example, you would need to have an interface or develop a specific applications for a smartphone, for example, or if you want to be the first in internet of things and have the fridge that speaks and has an AI model integrated, do it. But depending of your application, you will need more information or more, more, uh, more more tools more libraries you need to know but the first thing you need to know is python http request and uh, start exploring a framework like like chain in with, with 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 it you can start building your custom ai application from scratch someone is one two okay and the correct order is that python http request and the framework Okay, uh, share the YouTube framework. I will share you my YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about AI, let me share it with you. This is in Spanish, but I also all, uh, always provide translations and transcription in both languages, Spanish and English, to my videos using AI, of course. I just pass the video to the AI, and the AI is in charge of generating all the transcription and uh, translating that transcription to any language I, I want, but in this case, I just use Spanish and English. Uh, this is, uh, okay. Ah, <laughs> perfecto. <laughs> okay. And then it's a force multiplier, like a vacuum cleaner. Okay. Exactly. AI can help you to do everything you want in a matter of a little piece of the time. I always use AI, for example, to, ah, I can use AI, for example, to translate videos uh, directly in any language I want using a, my own a generated voice. So, the limit is in your imagination and your creativity and the tools you, you, you know. So I want to share something with you also that I was planning to share with you. And there is a website. There is an AI for that. This website has a wide range of AIs. You can find anything you are looking for. For example, a construction. Let me see what, what construction. It will charge architect AI, scene, construction, a lot, a lot of tools uh, using AI for Androids, uh, GPTs, iOS, Chrome. So you can use this website, let me share the link with you, to look AIs for your specific field, for your specific work. This will be so a valuable, a valuable website for your life. I, I don't use it really uh, all, all the time because I'm a developer and I prefer sometimes to build my own applications, but it's so useful for er, anyone, for anyone that wants to understand AI. Okay, let's, let's continue with this. I don't see more questions in the comments, so let's continue with this. Okay, also some concepts, concepts you need to know about AI. Some concepts you, you need to know or you need to, to, to adapt yourself to this new AI era. I think AI will be in almost all aspects of our lives in the near future. And nowadays, they are also in our nowadays, in my life, it is always bad. Okay. Okay, this list was not made really about AI, but let me share it with you. AI literacy, understanding basic AI concepts like I was sharing before with you. What is a prompt? I want to, there is a, a key concept here, prompt, hallucination. 
understanding hallucination is important, for example, because AI sometimes can be wrong. You don't need to trust completely on AI. Something that is seen is a problem uh, right now is the dependency of AI or will be a problem in the in the near future because everyone will be using AI and if we depend too much in a technology and the technology fails we can have uh, a wide range of problems that you can just imagine imagine that maybe the uh, instead of uh, of pilots we have AI pilots in our uh, in the uh, how to say? It? Well, let me let me show you something. Let me show you something I use every day to to improve my English. How to say a beyond in English? Ah, you can hear airplane. I I forget the word I wanted, but imagine that the pilots of the airplanes are AIs instead of humans, and that make maybe a bad uh, decision about uh, the airplane. Maybe instead of go the up, it goes down. It will be completely catastrophic. So we think the dependency of AI can lead to a lot of problems, and we need to understand its capabilities and limitations. One limitation of the AI is are the hallucinations. An hallucination is when the AI doesn't know something and the AI tells you anything. Maybe the first thing it can generate, it tells you. An AI model, understanding what is an AI model is important. I was already explained what, what is an AI model, the, the brain of the AI. Machine learning, this concept is important to understand how the AIs are trained. For example, the machine learning algorithms used to train ChatGPT or the, or, or the architectures used to build uh, an AI agent, uh, an AI chatbot, an AI model. So machine learning is important. Neural networks. What is a neural network? A neural network, I think I didn't ex ex explore this term in this workshop, but a neural network is like uh, how is, is in a type of model, a, a type of AI model that is made of uh, ne neurons. It has three main layers of neurons. The, the input neurons, the output neurons, and the middle. This middle is can be uh, extremely big or just a simple neuron. Each of these neurons have associ associated uh, some values like the biases and weights. Depending of these values, when you tell something to the AI, it will uh, has a, a, a way or the other. And or after that, it will go out from one of the output neurons. That is what, what that is um, a briefly explanation of how the neural network works, but it's so Im important to understand them. Natural language processing. Natural language processing is a is the ability of AI to understand human language. Also, it is a field in AI, the natural language processing field. In this field, uh, the key aspects are uh, we need to train an AI to understand language. For example, ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, these models understand human language. And also there are multimodal models. A multimodal model is a model that can understand images and can understand audio, can understand video, can understand text. A model that, that has different kind of data on its inputs. And also sometimes it can generate different kind of data on its outputs. There is a multimodal model. Reinforcement learning. Maybe the, you have seen uh, uh, some videos of people um, uh, making some harm to robots and making them fall, for example, in the in the ground when they are walking in their um, uh, make the model fall just because they are training the model. They are training the robot, for example, on how to, to stabilize itself. This the reinforcement learning is basically an interaction with a human that can lead to, to the AI, that can guide the AI to understand a new 
aspect, a new term, a new uh, a new something, something they needs to learn can be understood using reinforcement learning. Basi basically, errors and rewards. If you don't have a reward, that means you have an error and you are not doing the things well. Please, AI, change how are you working? Okay, and that's some uh, of the different things you need to know about AI. And let me know if you are if you have more questions here. Let me have a I just need a nap lower. But it's not gibberish. We'll have you looking at the desktop of screen thinking, who say that? Low. I read uh, yeah, yeah. but mine has gone crazy yet. Okay, this is not uh, related to to AI, and yes, uh, sometimes AI hallucinations can be uh, funny. Yeah. Okay, important here. Do you have any questions? So you want to know all, something about AI? Maybe you have a concern about what will happen in the future uh, about AI, if your job will be replaced. What do you work? Secure AI. Of course, Secure AI, for example, there is a company uh, raising money right now that is called Super uh, Safe Super Intelligence for, uh, from Ilya, 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 I don't remember always its uh, last name, but Ilya was a team member of uh, OpenAI. I think the secure AI are the future. Let me don't show the, this screen just to avoid the mirror. And well, Secure AI and also the, the next person asked about how AI will be ready in the near future. Any thoughts? Okay. Well, I think, uh, for example, the European Union are uh, developing some rules about how to, to rule the AI. Currently, it is in like, a, we, we don't have enough information about how they are, for example, uh, something that I think will happen in the future is that you will have uh, a small text saying, this conversation is being saved in our systems and is training to, uh, and is used to train another AI models, for example. Uh, the privacy. The privacy is one of the more important aspects of AI. Why are you sharing uh, your information? When are you sharing and where not? When are you not sharing your information with an AI? I think we can make uh, uh, improvements of how the privacy is working because sometimes we don't want to use AI. Well, maybe you, uh, we don't care about it, but there are some fields or some certain people that will care about it. And there is the privacy of when you are talking with an AI model. Is this message, is this information using to train another AI models? Is this, um, is good that an AI can uh, get all the content from internet to train another AI model? Is this good or not? So I think these kind of things will be regulated in the future to produce more secure systems. And because we need to have limits in how AI is working for us. Ah, secure AI punto dev. Mm. Ah, okay. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't use this, the, this platform before. Securing your digital world. Blockchain technology. I didn't use it secure AI, so I can share a lot of, uh, uh, of thoughts about secure AI, but I will check it out to know more about it. Thanks for that, for, for sharing it. How to record? How to recommend implementing implementing AI use in mortar corporation? I work in the construction and real estate industry, and we can improve our work with AI in so many ways, such as reviewing agreements, creating schedules, reviewing drawings. Okay, uh, in that field, uh, I was uh, talking with an engineer in that field in particular, and he told me, for example, that when uh, he, he's a civil engineer, and when they are building, for example, uh, a road, they need a lot of people uh, just to, to, to manage a program and pass certain data to a program. I think if you have a lot of use cases to, 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 that AI can do in this place, First, you need to think about your actual uh, applications that you are using. If you can customize your applications, 
it will be as easy as implementing an AI, uh, an API, for example, and, and send a request to this API and receive the answer. And depending on the answer, uh, answering to, to, to a customer or maybe use an application, you can make an AI agent. The term AI agent is an AI that can make more than just answer. We can use the thoughts of the AI, so certain information about the AI to manage programs, to make it schedule, for example, if you have an application like Google Calendar, or maybe you have just appointments in a, in a, in a spreadsheet, you can pass this spreadsheet to the AI to make the appointments for you. Uh, drawings, reviewing drawings could be interesting. For example, passing a drawing to an AI and generating an image of how this drawing can uh, be in the real world would, would be interesting in this, uh, in this field in particular. Also, uh, in the real estate, when you are talking with a customer, it would be interesting, for uh, for example, if I want to buy a house, I want to have recommendations or I want to talk with someone, I need a house with three rooms and uh, two bathrooms and the AI can, for example, uh, fetch some content, get some content from a database and suggest the user different uh, different uh, suggestions, different different houses it he can buy or he can rent. For example, this will be something useful in the real estate. I don't know if they are already using something like this. Uh, what else we can do in the real estate industry in construction using AIs? Maybe we can. Um, we can also use it to, to perform calculations, but not mathematical calculations. I think, for example, using a program to know, uh, to check if your calculations are good or not, uh, to be sure that you are not making mistakes in your calculus, for example. But yes, there are so many ways that you can use AI. I think you just need to think if you need to an implementation, a custom implementation, reach me out later in LinkedIn and told me uh, about your specific needs. And I will share you more information about how can you make your AI, AI application. Maybe you need something specific for your needs or something. Uh, if you need something, a, a tool that is already done, maybe you can just explore this website and start searching for your, uh, for well, let, let's search something related to, to real estate to see what happens. And there is an AI for that. Real estate. I'm using just an application here. For example, as your question is related to real estate, I will share a uh, search in the, here, just real estate and see how it, there is a lot of things, hyper-realistic, AI agent, AI reception, corpy, property, valuation and location analysis for real estate. This could be useful for your task. Interior AI, interior design. You can use this tool to make a different, uh, experiments of how you can design your your uh, your interior from a house interesting interesting there is a lot of tools you just need to search the right tool for your task or just develop your own tool if you think you need something specific and well yes this website is very useful you can use it for anything you want do you have any more questions do you want to know anything about AI. I think AI is changing our lives from, not from scratch. We, uh, we uh, I think as humans, we have the ability to be adaptive and always understand new things. And I think AI is a tool that can make us more widely intelligent. I think we can use AI to learn new concepts that we didn't know before. I think we can use AI to improve our thinking process. And I think I would recommend you to all of you to start using AI. If you are not using still, use AI to learn AI and to learn new things, to learn new topics, to be more productive. Try to automate your repetitive task. Try to answer things uh, in, a, in a portion of the time uh, that currently you are doing. And I think that's all. I think I 
uh, didn't have a, an exact time for this workshop. And I also wanted to have a QA session. So if you have a question about I, what, what, what I was talking about, if you want to know something else, feel free to, to reach me in the comments. I want to know your thoughts. What do you think? Do you think uh, AI will replace your job or not? Are you using AI uh, for automate your job, your, your job tasks? Do you think uh, your job will uh, uh, evolve in the future to a more AI related aspect? Maybe uh, you think the AI will be your boss in a moment? Do you think you, AI can replace your boss? This is an interesting question because I think sometimes the, the, the task of the bosses are less difficult than the other tasks. I think maybe in the future, I would like to see a, uh, an AI in the, uh, as a politician, it would be interesting to see the first AI agent that works as a, uh, as a, uh, in the politics, it would be interesting. I think in the future, it won't happen because the politics is always full of corruption and a lot of uh, uh, rules, but it would be interesting to maybe took decisions based more in logical statements and what is really happening instead of uh, um, a particular poli uh, political thought. For example, the AI can have uh, BSS to one or to another uh, aspect, but I think the, uh, exactly. I don't think uh, the AI can uh, replace our all the jobs, just it will be make us so productive. I think nowadays I can make an application from scratch just in one day, for example, just in one day using AI, you can just start a, a process where you ask the AI to, to produce code for a part of the application, copy, paste, have an error, pass the error to the AI, debug the error, and again, it's a useful task. For example, when I'm creating content also, if I'm creating a YouTube video, I use AI to generate uh, uh, scripts or generate uh, small scripts about the YouTube video and also suggest me image descriptions that I would uh, use or not, but I can use that image descriptions. Ah, something uh, that, that, was, that, that I was doing in a few days ago, I was using my AI to produce the script of a short uh, movie, a movie of maybe two minutes with different scenes about a, a, a certain topic and produce different scenes uh, with text and image descriptions. After that, you can pass this image description to your preferred image generation tool like Midjourney, Dali, or whatever you want to use. And after that, you can use, for example, Clink AI, Clink AI or Luma Labs. Also, you can use Lama Labs, Dream Machine here. And pass some images and start generating content. For example, this uh, alien, uh, just uh, an alien developer, just uh, being uh, worried and jealous in fury. But OK, you can use AI for anything you want. And that's I wanted to uh, that, that is all I wanted to share with you today. I, th I hope you enjoyed uh, this workshop. Yes, no, thank you, you Charlie. Can use for anything you want, I am uh, happy that we, this session was useful for you. All that I want you to know is that AI is here for us. I think it is a it is a tool that we need to start implementing from now. The first time I used ChatGPT, I used AI. I, it was mind blowing for me. I was working in a different, completely different field than tech. And I know it, well, this will be the future. How will be, this will be changing our entire lives in the near future. And I started using from, from that moment. And nowadays I'm all the time using AI for everything. And 
Well, I think you just need to start exploring tools, different tools for your specific task and your job. In this particular session, we will be discussing about job replacement and how AI in the workplace, how it is changing the game. But AI can be used for a wide range of things. Outside the job, you can also use AI, for example, to generate new recipes. I try to 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 uh, new recipes of different cultures of different flavors combine something that you think it's not uh, you haven't mixed it at all before you can use ai to produce anything you want and that's all if Thank you have you so any much, questions Charlie. Uh, resources I think we can yeah, put probably learn in more the chat about AI. Right? I would recommend you first follow some YouTube channels, interesting, for example, AI. Charlie, Explain, can we guide them to Four Geeks as well? A good YouTube channel in English that uh, he he shares code and YouTube information about it. Also, you can uh, subscribe to Medium. Medium is where you can get information about a lot of people and medium uh, for example this building a text-to-speech avatar with reacting uh, js and azure text-to-speech avatar ai so it's more uh, it's a it's a good uh, source of resources to learn more about anything related to tech and technology what more what can you use maybe to learn more and for geeks for example you can also uh, understand python and subscribe to one of the for geeks boot camps in python or javascript for example to start building your own applications i am also starting a, a syllabus on another course that will be more related to ai it is a, it will be a six month program on how to develop ai applications from scratch but it is not still uh, active but it will be active in the future but the most important value that you can use to learn AI and anything related is the AI itself. You can ask the AI, hey, I want to learn AI. Give me a roadmap of how, how to, to learn AI. Ah, another interesting tool is this roadmap that is a... Uh, hey, is Charlie, tool. can you hear me? If you select here, for example, AI and data scientists, you will have a complete roadmap of which things you need to know to be a data scientist and AI specialist. So it's an interesting tool if you want to learn from scratch a technology. Which tools, uh, for example, uh, the, the AI, as I mentioned before, you can ask the AI, hey, I want to learn something new and you just say to the AI what you need, uh, what you want to learn. The AI will be helping you in understanding these new topics from scratch and it's a completely awesome feature um, technology for that. Hey, Charlie. Do you have you any more questions? Can you hear us? I think Hello? not. <laughs> I guess you okay, can. Let me pass the, the voice to Victoria. You can talk, Victoria, if you want. <laughs> I don't think Charlie could hear I us. Don't, I can hear you. Ah, sorry. My, my. Yeah, Charlie, sorry. We were trying to get you. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, sorry. Technical difficulties. AI. Okay, now, now I am. Yeah, I can't tell us that. <laughs> um, no, thank you so much, Charlie. We really appreciate it um, for you just sharing all this information on AI. And definitely, we want everyone to check out Four Geeks Academy. Um, this is all led by the team. They have so much information on their website, uh, but we truly appreciate it. I know. Based on this session, we didn't really have a time frame because AI is so much and it can be very confusing. So um, thanks for those that stayed on, but definitely check out our survey. It will be sent to all the Tech Bestie members. We have so much coming up. Um, our website will be launched in October. But again, thank you, Charlie from 4Geeks Academy. You are an amazing AI expert and we really appreciate it. I share 4Geeks Academy's website in the chat for everybody. So um, if you're interested in learning more about them and everything that they do, um, Charlie works with them. So you can probably learn a lot more from Charlie through them as well. Um, so yeah. Thanks everyone. And thank you, Charlie. Thank you for the invitation. I will see you in the next time. Yes, Bye, thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.